Welcome, Thomas. Can you hear us okay? Y yes, now I can hear you. Can Can you hear me, Claire? Yeah? Oh, okay. Good. Yep, we can hear you fine. Thank you. Let's let's kill the broadband today. Everybody go on uh, on video. <laughs> hey, Rama. It's link in the invite. We're not using that. Sorry, say again. There's a Microsoft Teams link in the invite. Yes. Yeah, so my calendar, um, when I set these all up, defaulted all of my meetings to Teams meetings, and I hadn't realised. So, um, yeah, my apologies on that one. Cool. If we give it a couple more minutes, see if we get any more attendees join us, um, and then we can move on. Well, um, we've given it till nearly five past, so I'll kick off. We have two items on the agenda today. Um, it's much more of a workshop um, type session today, which is what I think we're all trying to get towards. So today we're going to be looking at the um, draft that Thomas has requested we have a quick review of, um, and then we'll move into the error message workshop um, ahead of our next IETF formal meeting. So, um, Thomas, I'll give you the floor. Okay, should I? Sh uh, okay, should I? Should I share my browser, or sh will you guys just scroll down the? Um, what is it? The. Um, I think if it, I think just to make sure everyone's got the same copy and is looking at the same section, if we could have one controlled view of it on the screen, might be useful. Okay, this I'm happy is, to drive. <laughs> I'm happy to drive if, if you're struggling, but um okay, let me let me so presentation view. Should is be that fine. what I want? Yeah. Okay. Presentation um, view and what am I presenting? Have, have you got the document open? Oh uh, it's in a it's in a browser. Can you guys see that? No. Uh, you're not sharing anything at the moment. Um so actually it's easier if if people just open up the SAT core O one. <laughs> The one I, uh, the one I uh, uploaded yesterday or the day before. Let me. All right, there's no printout. Let me share my screen. Uh, let me just share. There we go. So we should be able to see my screen okay. now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, twelfth of June, which is yeah yesterday. So. Um, the first thing uh, that Rafa and I, and, and with the help of Martin uh, remotely, uh, did was go through to make sure that, uh, particularly section six, seven, and onwards, that the flows were, cons we're using the same consistent words. You know, so if we say claims, you know, claims, you know, not assertions. So um, yeah, so th thank you, Claire. So if you look at that, um, the new addition is probably seven point one. So, so pre in the previous version, which is very messy, um, uh, each one of those uh, flows uh, request response would carry like the complete. Well, we were very verbose, you know, uh, the the uh, public key of the originator, public key of the beneficiary, and it, it just got too long. So we said, well, why don't we make this, you know, instead of you know put this together in this you know transfer initiation claims, which is a set of claims that G1 and G2 have agreed upon in stage um, zero. And so, and this is just a, all the set and we can, we can fix this, add this, remove this, but then it makes the text more readable, bearable as we go down because we don't have to repeat the whole thing. We just say, 
you know, transfer initiation claim. So when we say a hash of the claim, you know, uh, is the is is these are the these are the claims, the items that G1 and G2 has agreed upon, and so uh, each of each of the subsequent flows now becomes shorter because we don't have to put all this stuff. It's literally you know, uh, six seven you know components. Uh, so that that's kind of the sort of first just clean up effort. There's there's nothing new. It's just cleaning up, make, making this more. Uh, readable and also I think from a semantics perspective it makes sense because well there's no point proceeding to any of the other flows if you can't even agree on the you know claims that you know between G1 and G2 uh, to begin the um, the transfer so, so now uh, go ahead sorry so the just to give everyone a bit of um uh, background this is the new uh, draft that you're asking for us to adopt and you're talking through the changes. So these changes, do they replace the terminology glossary that we've been working on? Or have they now incorporated this into the text? As we sort of said last week, we might um last time we might want to do just to kind of um uh, frame the changes a bit. Yeah. Uh, no, it's 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 using the same terminology. Okay, I should put a caveat. Most of the ter terminology we've agreed on a terminology document. This is more of a moving text around. Uh, right. So that so that <laughs> the core document is <laughs> is bearable because it's it is thirty what it page it is like I'm I'm really like oh like wow this is grown and so now I should I should caveat that the digital asset ID and asset profile ID we have not uh, put into as yet into the um, into the uh, terminology document glossary document uh, uh, and also we, we used to say originator you know entity ID, uh, you know, and I've added the word verified because uh, part of the whole legal framework is there is that it's the job of G1 or the owner of G1 to verify the identity of the originator and same with G2 and the beneficiary, right? Mm -hmm. So I've added the word verified underscore. What's the point of sending, you know, information about a person if you've not verified that it's a true person, right? That's part of the whole, you know, whole setup. Indeed. And I think Ram's got a question. Sorry, I'm just trying oh, to go, go ahead. Ram. Aaron watch the view at the same time. Uh, thanks, Ben. Uh, just want to quickly point out that recipient is misspelled. Uh, other than that, uh, I want to ask if uh, do we want to say it's a JSON or do we just want to say it's a, I mean, it, it, it ought to be specified in any kind of format, yeah. right? Yeah. But, yeah. Given given that this is this document is intended for an implementer, a developer, we will have to say JSON or something else. Ho hopefully not XML. JSON. Okay. It could also be a protobuf. So it's pretty popular these days. Yeah. Yeah. Any any other uh, questions? Okay. So and I would. Just to clarify, then, are we saying that for two gateways to talk to each other, they have to use JSON? Uh, well, they, they will have to agree on a format. And we, we, we as ITF, typically, and correctly, correct me, Wes, uh, it's early over there in, in uh, California land. Uh, we need to say at least a one default format. We have to choose at least one, but it's not exclusively one. If somebody wants to re-implement the whole thing with XML, that's great. Uh, well, so two things. One, I'm actually in Washington D.C. for the ICANN conference. So I'm only here for a short period of time because you know other stuff to do. But um, the the general recommendation is if you can separate the format that you're delivering something in, you know, from the transport, that is a better architectural decision and lets you actually negotiate. What what you should absolutely must do is declare one as the mandatory to implement. Right. In order to get interoperability between two different things, you should say, look, you know, you're going to communicate the the you know, you must implement the JSON version of the spec. You may implement an XML version or something like that as well. So that's typically what we like to do in the ITF, if that makes sense. OK, good. Thank, thank you, Wes. Cheers for clarifying. Uh, um, any, sorry, any... Any further? Have we got anyone that's volunteered to take notes? I do apologize. I didn't check that. I started taking some notes in the note taking tool just based on where I came in. But I, as I said, I need to leave in about 20 ish minutes. So somebody else needs to pick up after me.
Can I have a volunteer for that before we go any further, please? Thank you. Cheers, Rama. Sorry, please continue. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so I guess the 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 other new thing that that is just a placeholder is that if you go to the um, well, two, I'm sorry, two more things. Um, there's a whole section eleven. Uh, well, se section ten and eleven are, are new new text, except there's nothing in ten. It's a placeholder for the session resumption uh, discussion or text. If we keep going down and and um, there's a whole discussion about which is, which is the next topic about errors and alerts and then the actual errors and alerts are all way back in the uh, appendix a uh, I, sort of it's you know and, and i think that's just for convenience if if people want to one day move it up to the main body of the text that's that's also okay uh, but this is the next agenda <laughs> agenda item and and i just discovered this morning this is really badly written <laughs> I, I don't know what I was drinking. Uh, maybe it's uh, you know uh, uh, Boston ale gone wrong, but it doesn't read well. Uh, so hopefully the slides will make up for it. So in my slides, I have a note: ignore the current text in section eleven because it's pretty awful. Glad you muted. Um, so, Thomas, you, you mentioned the slides. Do we have some slides to move on to in the next um, agenda item to yes. move into error messages? Y yes. I, and yeah. uh, should I email it to you or should I attempt to um, show it? You should be able to share your screen. Okay. Um, you should have the option to. If you have a go, I'll, I'll give you the permission to do so. Okay. So should I just try and presentation for you? Okay. Yeah. The, is it supposed to be pop? Underneath me? your name at the top of the screen, you should have a share screen option. Oh, oh there we go. I'm sorry. Yep. Sorry, That's guys. Uh, <laughs> That's fine. Good practice. Good practice. Uh, select window. Just, uh, I don't know what. Finder? Is that what I'm looking for? It should uh, give so you a, a list. When you press share screen, it should give you a list of all the windows you've got open and give you the option to share one. Can you can you see my PDF? Can you see no. this? No. Yes. No. Not at the okay. moment. Sorry. Let me try a different different way here. Sometimes it does take a second, so you might need to. Okay. Um, you can share the desktop too, as the other option. Okay. Yeah. Oh, if that's easier. Okay, that might be easier. You know what? It, it often works better, as much as I hate that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, and then it's going to say select window or screen, and it says. Adobe. Okay, now it shows Adobe okay. Acrobat. Can you guys see that now? No, you lost the request for some reason. You, you clicked somewhere that made you lose the request. Okay, let me try again. Sorry, guys. That's fine. Do that. Let's just share the whole um, my entire screen. Select window or screen. Entire screen. Yep. <laughs> okay. Allow. Okay. So there we I guess, go. Yep. There, there we go. go. Can you see that now? We can see your entire screen, including the slides, right? Including my face right now. This is this is fantastic. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> no, but can you see the PDF? Um, no, we can just see the web browser. Do you, do you have two monitors? If so, drag it to this one. No, this is just a standalone. Um, yeah, you know, Claire, maybe I should just email it to you. That's fine. That's fine. Give me, sorry, guys. Uh, As we discussed okay. last time, this is, this is the standard tool for during IETF meetings. So we could switch to Zoom or something else. But uh, since everybody has to learn how to use this for standard IETF meetings, it's actually good practice. And this is the, the okay. exact reason why. <laughs> I, I just emailed it to you, Claire. Hopefully, um, uh, hopefully you re you will receive it pretty quick. But otherwise, um, 
uh, I was I was not going to add this to the agenda item, but but uh, some of us will be in San Francisco for the ITF event in person. So um, you know, if, if there's an interest for people to get together and meet up and go out, uh, I hear yeah they, they have beer in San Francisco um, as well. So <laughs> uh, you know may, maybe I'll 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 send out a separate thread email and just get everybody. Um, you know, on the same email thread. I'm still waiting for the email to arrive, by the way. You could, you could blame uh, Microsoft Exchange there because uh, MIT moved over to Exchange and things uh, like uh, mailbox limits <laughs> became enforced. Yeah, so actually, while, while we're waiting, uh, an, another topic that's not on today's this, uh, thing um, agenda is uh, session resumption. So Rafael, is, is Rafael there? Hey, Rafael. So uh, we've been <laughs> whiteboarding, uh, you know, back at MIT. And, and the idea is that could we devise just a pair of messages uh, that says, basically, I want to I resume. And the answer is yes, yes, no. Uh, and and leave the whole, you know, crash recovery thing as a separate future document, but but have it in uh, uh, the SAT core spec so that people understand that 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 we know that there needs to be, you know, session resumption. And I think we need to address first session session resumption at the SAT P protocol level, and just assume that TLS is back up and alive again. Or, or has never gone away. So it's possible that the TLS keeps going, but the logic behind G1 and G2 falls, even though the, the TLS handler is still running. And so that was kind of the, the thought uh, for this idea of a session resumption. And, and that's why it is a placeholder in section 10 for the for the doc. I, Claire, remind me next time to email you ahead of time. Yeah, um, apologies, it's still not come through. Um, should we try screen sharing one more time? Yes, let me try that. Okay, let's let's try that. Uh, maybe I could do. I don't know. Okay, let's try it. Presentation view. Yep. Can you guys see PowerPoint? No, I'm doing yeah. PowerPoint now. Keep a minute. Time. And of course, the slides have just come through. <laughs> <laughs> Most Actually, yeah. Do you want to try sharing? I'll race you. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to revoke your screen just to start mine. Okay. There we go. Um, Can we see it? Yep. OK, great. Uh, so OK, so that's the topic. Uh, next slide, please, Claire. So um, so this is just the uh, discussion of the proposed model. So so I, I've, I've stolen this out of the, the TLS 1.2 draft, uh, RFC, or is it TLS 1? It's actually 1.2. It's And it also remains true in 1.3. So this is, if you guys are really interested, you can dig, dig the section six or section five of, of the TLS spec. And so the idea is that you want to distinguish between, you know, uh, uh, alerts and, you know, well, uh, there's, there's the alert uh, and then there's the a bit of information and the severity level. And I think that's kind of the model. And so we're thinking that for uh, SATB, we need to like look at like two possible classes or, or severity of, of, of messages. So the first one is, uh, is normal uh, orderly closure. Uh, so terminate notification, meaning that, okay, you know, transfer finish at the, our very last, um, you know, very last uh, stage of um, message, you could say afterwards, you know, terminate, 
you know, connection. So that's orderly. There's no error. There's no, it's not messy. The second one is the messy one. The second one is something happened. I'm terminating. And so, uh, uh, the word abortive closure, again, that's lifted, uh, from the TLS, uh, RFC. And so, um, the following question then the, the following is well okay depending on the severity we might be able to recover it because we don't want to if you're already like in you know the very last you know um uh, what is it uh, commit prepare you don't want to go all the way back to you know the first message um in you know stage one uh, so we, we want to be efficient you know in that sense uh, as well uh, next next slide um claire so, so this is a direct uh, lift, direct steal from, from uh, the TLS uh, RFC, and uh, I just remove all the all the existing codes, close, notify, bad certificate, TBD, TBD, and it would be depending uh, on us. And so, you know, an alert would be would include a description and and the level, uh, you know, uh, of uh, uh, of the er error. Okay. Next, next slide. We can go back, by the way, folks. If people are, you know, want to think about this. So it's this is a preliminary list. It's oh, in Appendix A. So this go is so. Oh, go ahead, Claire. Um, oh, you go first, Wes. It's fine. Well, I was just trying to make sure I got the intent of the previous slide. I mean, you're you're not gonna, you're not using the TLS error frame. You're no, just, no, no. You know, this is correct. No, this is copied. This is in um, SAT Core now. I, I modified it a little bit, but it's it's structurally it looks very similar. Is what I'm saying. If you're wondering where you know we invented this, you know, where we kind of stole it. Okay, um, so I was trying to figure out how we were going to clearly describe this, um, and so I would use consistent formatting or you know styles throughout. So you you may want to reframe it into a. The, the same style that the rest of the writing is and not use the TLS, you know, a C like structure unless unless you're using that everywhere else is my point. Okay, no, good, good point. I mean, we could, you know, so far, we've, we've been saying like, JSON as a as a as a sort of syntax. So we could uh, express this also in some kind of a JSON, you know, syntax, yeah, same, same curly brackets. It would, would make sense with defaulting to JSON. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know there's a lot of good RFCs that have examples as the document's going along for um, you know the different sections, so that you'll have a a section header you know that talks about this is what we're talking about, and then here's an example, here's a message flow example. We yeah. actually include real JSON and things like that. Uh, as a good example of something that doesn't have JSON in it is the IMAP uh, specification is actually very good to read and, and easy to understand. IMAP, okay. I'll, I'll check that out. No, that's that's this is exactly the kind of input uh, that we're needing. Where's like how do how do we express some of these sort of constructs? But yeah, so I'll I'll take a look at uh, the IMAP. And and you're right. I mean, the, the idea would be eventually we started doing this and never finished because we we needed to fix the error messages. Um, uh, actually, the protocol itself, you know, semantically, the the basically the 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 ideal scenario would be that. Every message has an example JSON at the at the bottom of it. This says example, right? So if it's we're sending you know a lock claim from G1 to G2, here's an example. But you're right. That's that's the kind of it's kind of good. Um, before Any? we move on, um, obviously, guys, I know it's um, a slightly more formal setup, but this is still very much an open forum workshop. So please do feel free to add any comments, ask any questions. Um, I'm sure Thomas won't mind me saying, you know, chip in at any time. This is this is what we're here for. Yeah. Yes, folks, please uh, please jump in. You you guys are usually very uh, active in the morning here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, next next one. Yeah. So this is just a quick note. Um, so we're, we're trying to focus right now semantics, meaning that given a, a pair of messages, whatever block. In the receipt, uh, what are the obvious ones? You know, claims are badly formed, blah blah blah. And what are the ed edge cases? And, and and Dennis is not on. Dennis is very good at picking the edge cases because he's got you know the de deployment uh, experience. And then um, the 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 difficult one: 
what scenarios will need human intervention. So for example, at the last, maybe it's on a mailing list, but in the last call, I think De Dennis was saying, you know, at the very last, you know, commit message, if the commit message doesn't ever reach G2, then it might, so asset has been deleted, it's been created but not assigned, it might need human intervention to go in and actually assign it manually to Bob, right? So that's kind of, you know, an example of, um, it's not worth rolling rolling back because it just needs an IT guy to say you know allocate allocate to Bob. But we'll 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 this is an ask for you guys these three bullets you know to, to help us figure out um, uh, you know the obvious ones the edge cases and the, the the really sort of bad ones that need you know human intervention. Um, okay, uh, next slide, player. Yeah. So, uh, so please open if you want message flow diagram version 18. Uh, it's up there on the GitHub. Otherwise, I've snippeted, uh, cut, cut and pasted the, uh, the different parts. So this is now, uh, and we begin in stage, uh, what is this, stage one? No, this is stage two, 2.1. So we're leaving stage one till later because it's a, it's a simple request response, but uh, it's all the, the transfer claims that we have to figure out for stage one. So this is now stage two. So this is transfer commence, and then uh, it is an acknowledgement coming back. And so uh, this is uh, the three sets, uh, groups of errors that that we think could happen. So badly formed uh, message, you know, G1 <laughs> uh, intentionally or otherwise replaced one of the claims in the transfer claim part that. The, had previously agreed. So G1 is trying to cheat, right? So it's okay, that's, I don't know what to call it. It's a badly formed message. Um, incorrect parameter. So the claims are okay, but something else is is wrong. You know, there was a clock uh, timestamp is wrong. Uh, and maybe the signature didn't work out. And then thirdly, the, an act, you know, mismatch. So this is more of, hey, G2 is sending an act for the wrong transfer commands because bear in mind that uh, for the same Alice user, Bob user, the same uh, originator address and beneficiary address and the same G1, G2, G1, G2 could in fact be handling multiple of these transfers independent of, of each other for the same application and for the same people, same two people. And this is why the whole context ID becomes very important and the whole thing with session ID becomes important. So in this case, an act mismatch could simply mean that uh, G2 is, uh, there's a bad logic on G2 and it's sending a uh, uh, response that has the wrong session ID, for example, right? This is, by the way, the diagram has got transaction ID. I think we have defaulted to saying session ID. So question on that. Um... I guess a couple of questions, I think. Um, so does the document to date, and I apologize, I have not read the latest one, and the last one I read was a while ago too. Um, you require all of the transaction messages to occur over a single TLS session. Well, so it, unless resumption happens, right? So, you know, if there's two yes. TLS sessions open, a, a, all of the transactions for a particular one should go over the same session, right? Yes, ideally, unless there's a better way of doing it. But a quick answer is yes. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, TCP has a concept of flows and things like that. And, and so that was my other question is, does the document yet talk about, should you have one TLS session per transaction or can you interleave transactions over a single TLS section, uh, which is where you get into things like, you know, head of line and blocking and all those types of issues. Um, you know, any of those approaches are fine, but, <laughs> yes. but you do no, no, have very good, very good ways. This is, yeah, uh, I don't know, people, you know, uh, uh, we have not really discussed ever whether or not it's we're, we're requiring a single TLS session or could G1 and G2 effectively have a, have a big pipe, a big tunnel, a permanent, not a permanent, a long-term TLS session, and you're running, you know, multiple transaction transfers across the same TLS, in which case, you know, error 2.3 is a is a true possibility. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, no, any... Sorry, just on on these acts, you know, when I when I was talking um, about the endpoints on the email on the mailing list thread, um, I was considering like maybe we don't need some of these acts or we need more acts. But um, I know Raphael um, addressed all my all my concerns, uh, but maybe me and Raphael can catch up after this meeting just because I'm still I still really strongly feel that we should try to standardize so maybe if we remove this ACK and it's like an implicit response either that or we add ACK in all the other places um like uh for for a standard yeah. um yeah. HTTP post request for example the the response to that then yeah you, you there can't really be a mismatch here yeah no so th so this is now at the semantics level so the three phase commit requires the act and some of the acts are actually digitally signed so for example one of the acts in this is in fact a receipt it's a it's a json structure it has to be signed by g2 so it's not uh it's not a http post and then you gotta you know whatever what a message yeah. okay message yeah but yeah, i, I yeah, understand yeah. what you're saying that for every for every post you sh you should get a, a response an okay not, not a yes error, exactly yeah yeah i mean something. yeah it, yeah. it could be a response with a body as well it could be a 200 yes. k plus yeah. plus any anything that is required in the ACK data structure for example yeah but we could use the same representation method right in in the diagram that's kind of what i'm advocating for because in some places we have for example here we have transfer commands and an ACK, but in other places we don't have the ACK. um so yeah 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 so that that's uh, all of that is a part of the three phase commit definition like if you want to say we want to do three-phase commit we actually have to send these message you know back and forth and and the other um uh, you know the other uh, cases uh well we, we've kind of put it aside but it's a possibility that people will someone may not want to use http yeah yeah that's right, right. in which case there's no we'll post it, it you know there's else. no post or whatever patch yeah yeah. yeah which is like so <laughs> <laughs> if I can rephrase Alex's statement in a way that I think the, the way I put it into the notes, um, you have a sequence of, you know, commands or messages, and in some ways, because there that sequence is a defined order, an act can be implicit by following along in the sequence where the opposite side sends the next message, and because they sent the next message, it means that they had to have acknowledge the previous one unless there's a digital signature or something something that is required for uh you know to act the previous one or something like that is that a fair summary yes yeah. i think so uh, alex is that good yeah yeah that's uh that's good okay um if there's no more question, you, you'll see this, you, you'll get bored pretty quickly because it's a, yeah, keep on, next slide, please, Claire. You, you'll see the same types across. So this is, this gets more complicated. So, so lock, both lock assertion and receipt are signed messages. And this, this is because G1 and G2 are now on the hook, right? Uh, legally on the hook. They're, they're signing, is they're saying things to be true. And so, for example, um, some of the errors could be badly formed message. So the, either the claim is wrong or, you know, the, the something is wrong in the lock assertion claim. Data structure or, you know, maybe maybe something else. Bad signature. So the signature part did not work out. A G2 could not validate the lock assertion message. Uh, wrong transaction ID. We, we saw that before. Uh, mismatch hash value. So this is where uh, there's this there's this. Uh, you know, idea that um, each message should, should carry the hash of the previous message. So uh, for this one, I think it was a 2.4 2 supposed to carry the hash of 2.3. Now, it could be that uh, G, G1 is trying to cheat, and so it's putting in the wrong hash value on purpose, or there's just bad logic implementation. Um, expired signing key certificate. So if, if G1 is signing you know using public key cryptography and there's an x509 cert g2 tries to fetch that you know using you know walking the keychain going up and then says okay uh one of those certs up the up the chain 
is um, expired or invalid. Um, and now the the fourth one was a was a good one that um, actually Raphael suggested the the, the last one the two point four point six which is expired claim. So it could be that the lock assertion claim is going to be set to be valid to be like say 60, 60 seconds. Okay, and then um, G two uh, took longer than that took five minutes. And so message 2.6 is, is, you know, delayed very much. And so it could be that, um, you know, uh, by that stage, the claim has, you know, gone stale, basically. One uh, question on this and several other, other of the error messages. You don't seem to have an error that says the operation failed. You know, in this case, what if a, a attempt to actually do the lock doesn't work yeah yes yes so 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 this is <laughs> thank you dave so so do you notice all the arrows going outwards into the network G network one network two is not included because technically speaking it's not part of the protocol but yes we would love to have uh we should add the reason you know so it could be that you know uh but, the, the uh, lock on a particular yeah yeah I, yeah i mean G2 lock on network one failed yeah yeah, for G two, you know, G two or G one, in several cases, see the the peer uh, gateway has has to know that an operation failed on on the other gateway. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, apologies, okay. I did have to run for a meeting. Uh, Ramak or uh, was it Ramak that was going to take over note taking? Uh, please make sure that somebody continues capturing notes. Thanks. Thank you, Wes. Uh, quick question. I mean, I've been taking notes from my computer. Do I need to take notes? Uh, this note taking tool? You don't have to use the note taking tool, Rama. You uh, just anyway, and then if you send them over to me and Wes, we'll combine them all. All right. All right. Yeah. So, so D uh, David, thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> those are the those are the hard ones. How 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 do I say this politely? These are the these are the easy, obvious ones. But so you know, uh, you know, for example, um, this step two point four took too long. Okay, G two is waiting, and waiting and waiting, and that's you know, and finally gives up uh, because uh, gateway one is unable to actually do the the lock, right? So that's a that's a so we that we we want to do that we want to add the the more what I could call say you know, difficult you know scenarios into the error message because we we want to be as informative as possible between G one and G two. And for this slide, lastly, so the the receipt is the same set of errors basically the, the receipt it's because it's a sign assertion as well a sign claim the receipt so pretty much same things can go wrong. Okay, uh, moving on, Claire. Sorry. Uh, this is again commit, prepare, and commit, prepare, act. So these are pairs, badly for a message, mismatch, hash value. May, I may not be saying it the right way, but basically, the hash of the, you've got the wrong hash. It should be the hash of the previous message, and, and it's not computing. So you might have done something wrong. In some incorrect parameter. Okay, so this. This needs more discussion and elucidation. You know, any one of those commit prepare parameters could be, um, you know, in error or mistaken. A message out of sequence. Uh, so commit the commit uh, prepare um, was sent before the the last message. So we we put it in there. Not not really being sure if this is even possible. Three point one point four. Given the fact that a, there's a, the three three phase commit has a very tight set of messages that need to go in sequence. Okay, uh, next one, please, Claire. Uh, yep, commit commit ready and commit prepare. So so in interesting. I think in the email, uh, Rafael and I sort of discussed this that. The original commit, prepare, and commit act. The commit prepare actually has um, two, two 
I, I have been calling them children. The act prepare going back, we just saw, and then there's a commit ready. So, so in fact, there's this silence between 3.2 3.4, where in fact, G2 is trying to create the asset in message 3.3, A and B. And, and you know, if you, if you guys open the full um, message flow, you'll see this. And then 3.4, I'm ready. Right. So it's pretty much the same set of possible errors. And I inv invite you guys to okay, pr 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 print this out on a big sheet, you know, put it on your wall and, and stare at it, you know, uh, plenty of times in a day to figure out like what things can go wrong. Uh, next, um, next one, please, Claire. Uh, yep. So this is commit commit final. So this is this is an assertion. This is a a sign claim, an assertion, and then the receipt coming back is also, uh, and, and this is because um, you know basically G one in three point six is saying I, I've done my job. I've extinguished the asset or disabled or whatever the network one kind of needs. And then in 3.8, um, G2 is saying, yes, OK, I, I've done my bit, which is um, I've assigned the uh, asset that I created to Bob. right? And so 3.8 is also interesting because if there's a dispute, Bob says, I, I've never received it. Uh, Bob could get the assistance of G1 and say, hey, you know, G2, you, but you said to G1 that, that you gave me the um, the asset, but in, in reality, you have not. Right? So, uh, so this is pretty much the same set of errors. And in next one, Claire, please, I think it, I think we might be at the, oh yeah, this, I think this is the last slide. So, okay, so um, next step. So wanna figure out the set of errors that may happen in stage one. This is all the transfer initiation claims. This is, I think, section 7.1, 2, and 3. Uh, and some of this, by the way, the actual actions, you know, in the real world is outside our scope. All we, all, all that G1 can G2 can do is report. So, you know, if G1 says, you know, benefit G2 says beneficiary address has been validated, uh, it's a, it's a statement, it's a legal claim, and that's why we call it transfer initiation claims. Both sides need to sign, uh, you know, these set of claims. We want to improve the current uh, set of error messages. So if you have any input, suggestions, you know, feel free. Uh, and for the <laughs> for those who know who are developers, yeah, you know, error messages are like one of the most boring uh, parts of engineering. But uh, you know, uh, it's desperately needed. A good good error message set is is you know crucial for deployment. And then um, finally, we will we plan to be putting on some, adding on some more text uh, for human inter intervention cases and session resumption. Uh, and I think uh, the plan is uh, we want to have a discussion, correct me, Raphael, at the, at the San Francisco IETF on session resumption. What, what should it, we, we have a sketch on a whiteboard, but we kind of need to think some more about it. Um, we can definitely put that on the uh, agenda, obviously. The the session will be we've, we've put a two hour slot in so we'll definitely have some time to, to look at that as well if you'd like we need uh, a oh i love that okay that's yeah. a great idea yes like uh yeah back out yeah, yeah okay okay good idea yeah why does all that have to be human intervention and not be an automated rollback. I mean, upon the based on the timeout, like uh, G two is timed out, listening to G one, so it just has to roll back. Yeah, so so there are very narrow, uh, very um, what's the word? I think I wish Dennis Dennis was here. There there are cases where where in fact. It's it's not a deadlock, but but uh, the as I said, the the commit uh, uh, with three point six was sent out and but then never got to G two. That uh, all, it basically the it, something stuck on G two and the IT admin guy needs to go in and say release transfer like actual manual override authorize release to Bob. 
right? Versus, okay, this is thing is sitting here uh, because G2 crashed, uh, G2 has come back, it doesn't know what to do. And so it's sitting there just waiting for the asset to be allocated to Bob. So that's an example. But, but uh, Rama, the goal is like, we need to understand these very tight, rare occurrence scenarios so that if it does happen, it's in the spec that somebody reads this thing in 10 years. And believe me, uh, having been very close to the Kerberos RFCs, uh, there were <laughs> there were a lot of these cases that were not in the RFC that had to be put, uh, and that was that was because people are actually seeing it, you know, in deployment. I, I don't know if that helps, Rama. Yeah, I think uh, see, we have to think through the different possibilities. I'm just wondering, like uh, when you say human intervention, uh, I mean the gateways have legal liability, right? So I imagine if a human goes and intervenes and rolls something bad, that human is then going to face legal liability. No? Yeah, 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 yeah. We 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 don't mean somebody IT guy logging in and saying, "Hey, I'm just gonna roll back," you know, this stuff because I don't like it. It's more this thing is sitting, it's unresolved, it's sitting. It's it's not it's not like like deadly. So 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 for example, um, G uh, network one has already extinct. G one network one has already extinguished the asset. Uh, the asset is is actually now uh, is in the possession of G two. But G2 has was not able to give it to Bob, right? And, and G2 is honest. It's not like G2 is trying to, you know, take the asset for himself itself. Uh, but it's it's there because G2 crashed, wakes, wakes up again. Now, a, a good implementation should be able to clear this very quickly, right? So there's all these pending, yeah. A good, <laughs> but there are bad implementations. You need an IT guy to log in and say, "Okay, there's these three pending thingies. It's supposed to go to Bob, you know, Doug, and you know, Rama." And so I would say, you know, approve, approve, approve. I think having having text there just to to convey that we are aware of these very. Uh, it happens in databases as well. Uh, so but having text there kind of helps us, you know, convey that like we yeah we we've thought of these very very rare. Uh, scenarios. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Any, uh, uh, I think that's the last slide, Claire. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? So the next steps seem fairly clear um, in terms of capturing the feedback from today, making the changes, and then, of course, um, looking at the additional uh, messages and outliers. Is that something that we want to put on the agenda for our next meeting, the IETF 117? Or do people have anything else that they would like to, to have on that agenda? Um, we'll be putting a, the chairs will be putting a call out um, at the end of the session today. Um, or early tomorrow, depending on when I get around to it, <laughs> is a call for agenda items. But is is that something that we want to pick up as part of that working session? Because I think the, the working session that we had in in um, Japan uh, was uh, less of a working group and more of a, a presentation. I think that may have been the time difference, and because it is our first official one, um, and obviously we want to make sure that we're making the most of these these groups. Yeah, I mean, if we have the time, I think we should talk about some of these. I mean, this is, it is, it is SAP B core. I mean, this is, this is our, the, <laughs> these are the, the, the number one deliverable, right? This is, this it's is what people are going to go against. The get done is the core. Yes. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's the one thing we need to get that pushed all the way through. And then we can start looking at um, some of the other things that we've got on um, our interest list in terms of uh, things that aren't approved right now, but. Um, that members of the working group are, are really interested in moving forward. The ad agenda will be documents first. So anything that would support the document um, readiness, anything that will support the document development um, would, would definitely be high up on the agenda list. Fab. Well, if no one's got any more input on what we covered off today, um, Obviously, we'll send around the, the minutes and the notes once um, we've compiled them. Um, some really good input there. Thank you, everybody. And um, we'll share that around as well as the call for agenda. We will speak to you soon.
everyone take 10 minutes back <laughs> have a nice day everybody cheers guys thank you bye. thank nice. you bye bye nice see you folks bye